all the theory that we've developed tries to get rid of that interaction between people. And if you talk to economists, they say, these are externalities, these are imperfections in the system. But you could think of it the other way around and say, no, but wait a minute, maybe this is central to the system. Maybe it's these interactions that are important. And what we see happening in the economy is due to all these interactions. And it's not to do with what the individuals themselves are thinking in isolation. It's the fact that they're interacting with each other. We've seen economics developing and we've become more and more sophisticated in our models. We've become, everybody says they're more general, they're more sophisticated, and that's true. But I don't think they're telling us any more about economic reality uh, than uh, they did before, and that wasn't too much. And when we got into the crisis, immediately what you see is the people who have to run policy getting very upset with economic theory. Trichet said, you know, well, we have to relook at these things. We should think about things like bounded rationality. We should think about other ways of looking at economics. Because in the crisis, he said, we had to rely on judgment and experience and not on our economic advice. So that's really bad. If you think you have what people would like to call a science, and yet when you get into trouble, people cease to rely on your advice and then they look at other things. So I think we really should be rethinking economics. And what's happening is that all around the edges. People are starting to do things, behavioral economics, they're starting introducing other things. But I think the nicest analogy to what's happening in economics is what one physicist said when he came to economics. He said, you know, it was like my visit to Cuba. I went there and I saw all these cars, packards and things from a long time back. But these people very cleverly, very ingeni ingeniously have managed to keep these things running and they run quite well. But they're out of their time. and it, in a sense, economic models are a bit like that, I think. We've got stuck in a path, and these models are not telling us much about what's actually happening in reality, and they're not telling us much about crises. And I think models that tell us more about crises and less about calm periods would be much more important for us, because it's the crises that are really, and the difficult periods that we should be really able to handle. So I think, that, yes, I would say economics is in a crisis, and I think our fundamental paradigm based on the isolated, optimi optimizing individual who takes his decisions on his own, is simply a wrong view of the economy. And we've inherited it from Val Ras, and we've kept going down that path. And I think time has come to say, you know, maybe this is really the wrong path. And the bad thing about what I'm saying is that if you did build models which were more like reality, what those models would have as a property is that they would be very unlikely to give you good forecasts because the system is such that it's not really forecastable. But it would help you to understand these sudden movements, these bad movements, these bad episodes. And so we would be able to say, well, we can look for symptoms of that. We can look when this sort of thing's happening, and maybe we can do something to dampen these effects, rather than say we're going to make exact predictions. And we, we spend so much of our time b believing that we can say things like 3% deficit is the really crucial figure. But nobody's ever shown that that's important economically. Why 3%? If, we, if I was really cynical, I would say what we should do is choose numbers which have some intrinsic importance. So, for example, let's choose pi and say to people, we need pi percent deficit because pi is 3.12 something or other. At least pi has some significance. But these numbers are totally arbitrary, you know, and, and economists have this what somebody once called spurious precision. So we want to give the impression that we know how to forecast, that we can say next year it'll be 1.6% the um, growth or 1.3%, but then we correct it. And our forecasts are always wrong, and they always will be wrong. And however sophisticated we try and make our current models, we're not going to get that much better. But we want to have this idea that we can churn out these figures and tell people what's happening. And the government says we need in France $50 billion of savings, but we don't know what the state the economy will be in to get those $50 billion. So this is somehow an artificial process in which we're just kowtowing to these numbers which we generate. And we should be much more modest and say, well, oh, we're going to try and guide the economy in the right direction, but not these specific numbers. You know.